Good morning to all of you. Welcome to the Let There Be Light program. Today is Monday, the beginning of a new week, and I'm sure that you want to be successful in your work, in all the things that you have planned to do this week. And for that to happen, it is important that you know you need the help that comes from God. You may do many things alone, according to your, your understanding, your knowledge, your human strength, your human capacity, all of that. However, the only way for you to be sure that everything will be okay is if you allow God to be in your life. It's if you seek His direction, His instructions. And that's why we have today the prayer for finances. All of those who are business owners, for those who have their job, no, they work for someone, or they are trying to find a new job. If you are an employee and you want to find a new job, you are struggling with your visa. Well, if you have any difficulties, any issues regarding your finances, today is the day that you may come to one of our uh, universal church and receive prayers of faith and the guidance that comes straight from the Word of God relay in regards to your finances, okay? Any kind of situation, issues that you are going through. And I am sure that things will go different to you, okay? And we have the helpline number available for you right now. If you need to talk to us, if you are worried, if you feel desperate, if you feel downcasted, if you feel like your, your, your world, your life is, you know, coming down because of what is happening, you, you don't have strength in you anymore to do nothing, to, to, to make a call, to, I'm saying, talk to the lawyers or with someone else, but you can talk to us. We are here to help you. You see me, but behind cameras, we have a team of pastors waiting and willing to talk for you and pray for you as well. The number is there on your screen, available for you to use it right now. And let's watch a testimony. Testimonies, they awake our faith. It's a way for us to know how faith works. It's a way for us to understand what is behind a miracle. And behind the miracle is faith, faith based in the words of God, okay? So let's watch it. I started to develop mental health issues, um, including depression, from as young as 11 years old. And this was because I had a lot of problems with family. Um, I didn't grow up with my dad being around, and this caused me to be angry inside. And also when I was around the ages of six, it was when I was first sexually abused. And this is what started to create a void inside of me, like an emptiness, like a sadness that was really something that I didn't know how to deal with. I didn't really understand at that young age. That's when I started to kind of search for other things. So in school, I was the bubbly person. I was the person that would be like the one to make jokes, to like be the first one to do everything. From as um, young as 13, I was already getting involved in drinking, smoking weed, thinking that it would fill this emptiness, but it didn't. I even went on to have sexual relationships from as young as 13 because I was searching for a way out. And it really created such a void that every single day without fail, I'd go home, cry myself to sleep, not knowing really the reason why, but because I was so sad inside, that was the only way I knew how to deal with the depression. One of my worst moments with depression was when I was at the age of around 11, so when it kind of first began, and I would have suicidal thoughts consistently, and there was a time when a thought just came to my mind, just go, like there was a busy road, and I said, okay, I'm gonna go. But for some reason, of course, nothing happened and I didn't die. Even though I was so young, people would recommend me to go to therapists, to speak to someone, but I would never do it because for me, it was just like, it was embarrassing, and of course, 
I wanted to keep up this perception that everything was okay. How I found out about the Universal Church was through a friend that, um, through another friend of a friend, so like a mutual friend had invited me and that's how I came. I came to a Sunday morning service, if I'm not wrong. I understood that this was somewhere that I needed to be in that moment in time because I understood that I was suffering in that moment in time. So it was somewhere for me that I knew, okay, this is where you need to be. As I kept on coming, and I didn't just come to the Sunday mornings, but I came to the Wednesdays, the Fridays and the Sundays. So for me, Friday service was when I would come like specifically to fight against this because I understood that it wasn't a physical thing but a spiritual problem that I was going through. With time, I could see not just by what someone would say to me, but by me actually using my faith as I was taught in the services, I saw that gradually I was starting to be happier, but it wasn't something that I forced. It wasn't like before where I tried to mask how I felt, but it was genuine, like I was actually happy. I understood for myself that when I receive the Holy Spirit, it will fill literally everything that's inside of me that was making me to fill this void. So it helped me to overcome everything. So even like on the outside, things that, okay, weren't internal, but getting along with family, getting, having like a happier and better relationship with my family. It helped me with all these different areas, not just the depression that I was going through. So it was able to transform, not just what was inside but as a result of me being happy inside and receiving the Holy Spirit it manifested itself on the outside and other areas of my life. When I received the Holy Spirit it wasn't a feeling but more of an assurance that I was with God and God was with me also. So for me before I was the sort of person that I didn't believe in myself because of the depression that I went through. I didn't believe in myself because of the kind of young person that I was growing up. But the Holy Spirit gave me the strength to overcome because it doesn't mean like now that um, I have the Holy Spirit that I wasn't going to go through problems. I went through problems, but because of the Holy Spirit, I was able to overcome. So today I'm at peace. I'm much happier. The void that I used to fill, that I used to try and use to fill with drinking, smoking, all these other things, the Holy Spirit filled that gap. That feeling that I used to feel, I no longer feel because I'm actually happy. It's been three years, being free from depression, but three years where I'm actually happy. Three years that I can actually say I have a purpose. Through the Holy Spirit, I was able to overcome the battles that I go through daily. I'm free, I'm no longer depressed, I'm no longer suicidal, and I actually have a genuine peace, regardless of the problems that I go through. One man, Abraham, Lord, one request, I am Almighty God, walk before me and be blameless. How can God ask a human being to do such a thing? especially we who are so imperfect. How can we fulfill this request? To walk in God's presence is to walk in God's thoughts. This right here is where everything happens, the starting point for human action. When we think, we immediately sail into the imagination of what we've decided to think about. We are able to travel through time. Thoughts can make people do unbelievable things. And also, the most barbaric crimes. What you think about is what you live for. How many have given their minds to thoughts of death, revenge or inferiority? 
and live their lives surrendered to what they absorb. They are slaves to their feelings. They don't reason. They live by what they feel or don't feel. The world is immersed in a sea of emotions and sensations. The God of this age has created a lifestyle that makes people occupy their thoughts 24 hours a day specifically for them not to have time to think. Deceitful heart. It has caused human beings to feel and not reason. God is the Word and the Spirit. He doesn't work with the heart, but with the mind. Rational faith and feelings are like oil and water. They don't mix. What God asked of Abraham is what He desires from each of us. It's true, we're imperfect. But when His thoughts come inside us, His perfection is installed in our lives. The perfect peace, the true joy. It was something so glorious that changed inside of me. It changed my way of thinking and how I act. A person who thinks like God doesn't fear. He looks forward to the future. At the Universal Church, I've learned how to use intelligent faith. Faith that is not moved by feelings. Faith that works. Here are the thoughts of the Most High. The map to immeasurable wealth. The Word of God is a treasure that's hidden from the world, from unbelievers and from those who are proud. And yet, it is available to those who are simple and humble. Those who absorb the wealth that is in the Word are led by its Spirit, the Holy Spirit. It doesn't help you to change your body, your clothes, your bank account or your relationship for you to find that happiness you've been longing for. What you need to change first is your thoughts. If you do that, you change everything. And there is something that I would like to say about the video that you saw now, the thoughts of God. You know, our mind is always occupied by something. There is something here in our mind. Since the moment we wake up until the moment we go to sleep, there's always something here. Can be good, can be bad, can be something that brings you happiness, brings you joy, brings you trust, puts you down, makes you feel sad, and something that will help you to make the right choices that day or the next day, or something that will uh, lead you to the right choices, the right or the, the wrong choices. And our today's our your, your your today's thoughts, let's put it this way, your today's thoughts will be your tomorrow's decisions or choices. So what you have now, right now in your mind, and what you feed in your mind is what will lead you to do tomorrow. You will make your choices in your decisions in life based in what you are feeding here in your mind. So you need to watch what kind of thoughts you have. And the more you think negatively about yourself, the more, uh, the, 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 I would say, the worst you will see yourself and the weak you will feel yourself. Look what is written here. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit 
with him. So how can we be joined to the Lord? Because it says here is one spirit with him. Well, through our, our minds. In other words, when you allow the thoughts of God, which is the word of God, you allow the thoughts of God to be here in your mind. When you allowed yourself to be guided by the, the word of God, when you uh, base your life, your choices, your decisions in what is written in the word of God. If here says that this is right, so it's right. Even if everyone else says it's wrong, but if here says it is right, so it is right. If everything around you tells you that you are a, a failure in life, and here says that you can be an overcomer, so you will choose to believe in what is here. And you will guide your thoughts with what is here. You will feed your thoughts with the thoughts of God. Everyone tells you you are weak, but the Bible tells that you can be strong. It says, say, may the weak say, I am strong. So you will say what is written here, even if everyone tells you, no, you are weak, you will never be anyone in life, this is too much for you. Okay, but here says something different. If circumstances try to convince you that you, you are hopeless, there's no hope for you, no hope for your marriage, there's no way for you to overcome that depression, there's no way for you to find happiness in life, but the word of God says the opposite, well, you will believe in what is here. Everyone is saying to you, oh, there's no chance for you and this and that. But the word of God says, well, if you come to me, to, to God, to Jesus, you will find relief. So, okay, I will, no one, uh, in anywhere I was able to find peace, relief, but in God I will find. So if you allow your thoughts to be filled with the thoughts of God, you can be sure that you will see yourself and life different, you will feel different, and things will change in your life. So again, but he who is joined to the Lord, you need to know with whom you are, whom you, you are joined with. If you walk with someone who is very, very, very fear, that person is always fearing something. Everything that person fears, it's very insecure. You will become just like that person. You can be sure you will become just like that person. You will start to fear things that usually you didn't fear. You will start to feel insecure regarding everything in life. You will become just like that person because you joined with that person. So this is, you need to know if you walk with God and then you will become one spirit with him because you allow his thoughts, his words, his teachings to be there inside of you. Are you fighting by yourself to get through a difficult moment? Do you feel like there's no one you can talk to to ask for help? You are not alone. We are here to listen to you and help you. Call us now. 9602-9837 afraid of the storms that rock your life God will protect you call on his name he swore to bless you and take away your pain and give you joy don't be afraid 
of the pain that breaks your heart no need to fear put your trust in God he'll dry your tears no dream or problem is too big for him the sun may no longer shine the moon may give up its light but his promise will remain until the end my god is not At any given moment, everything in life needs to stop in order to be recharged and refueled. You can either do that or the device will be of no use to you. What is the point of running back and forth, going after your goals non-stop, but becoming weaker and emptier? Maybe you have been living like this spiritually on the edge. The Faith School is the mandatory midweek hit stop. It is for you to recharge your strength so you can face your battles refueled and strengthened with the Word of God. When the Word enters you, this is what happens. Stop, think, and invest in your spiritual growth. This Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. 153 Northumberland Street, Liverpool 2170. Remember to bring your Bible. And bring your Bible together with you this Wednesday if you have one. If you don't have it, well, you come anyway because we, are, we will study the Faith that pleases God, okay? faith that makes miracles happen, faith that is powerful, which is the faith the size of a mustard seed. We've, studied, we've started this study two weeks ago, three weeks ago actually, and we are continuing talking about that kind of faith, pure faith. Pure faith. So I invite you to join us this Wednesday, either 7 a.m., 10 a.m., 3 p.m., or in the evening, 7.30 p.m., and it will be the night of the hour has come. You know, the Lord Jesus talking to the Father, He said, Father, the hour has come, has come. Glorify your Son, so your Son may glorify you. And you know when God is glorified? when you know Him, when you receive the Spirit of God within you. That's when God is really glorified. It's not when you achieve miracles in your life or when you change your physical or your material life. You glorify Him through your testimony. However, He feels glorified when you become His child. And we become child of God when we receive the seal of the Spirit of God within us. That's when He feels glorified. It's different when we glorify God through our testimony. Oh, we thank God of, because of this blessing, because of this delivering, that miracle, this healing. However, He feels again, I insist, He feels glorified when we become his child. So this Wednesday will be the day of the hour has come and your hour has arrived as well. Time for you to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. It's already time, the hour for you to receive the Spirit of God, to become a child of God has come. So you will come Wednesday with this idea inside of you. I'm going to the house of my father because today is the day for me to become 
as child of God. The hour has, has come. I will become a child of God. God will be glorified because I will receive the seal of the Holy Spirit within me. Here in our church in Liverpool, I'll be with all of you at 153 Northumberland Street, okay? Close to the Westfield Shopping Center, the New Meriton Hotel as well, here in the center of the city. 153 Northumberland Street, Liverpool, but we have the branches in Chatswood, Blacktown, Brisbane, Van Denong, and Footscray as well. Times are the same, 7 a.m., 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 7.30 p.m. Only Brisbane is at 7 p.m. Okay, but if you have any further questions, you may always send us a WhatsApp or an email to our help email. It's help at uckg.org.au. And as well, we have the online pastor that you can chat with one of our pastors. Well, if you go to our website, you will have all this information together there, as well the timetable, the times of the services and the addresses of the churches, all our branches, testimonies and several other things. May God bless all of you. And tomorrow, same time, we'll be back with the Let There Be Light program. God bless you all.